Hello, welcome to the first episode of Implementing Exceptions with Ruby. My name is Hernan Wilkinson, I work at Tempines, and I'm going to be the one guiding you through this series of videos. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to implement a complete new model of exceptions using the Ruby language. The idea is to do it just with objects and messages, no special uh, syntax support, no special VM support, just objects and messages. You may be wondering why we're going to do this. Well, the idea is that we're going to do it to learn how exceptions are implemented. We as programmers usually don't see how exceptions work, how they are implemented. They are implemented in the VM as a kind of magic for us. So the idea is to implement exceptions and to see that we can do it using just objects. Doing so, we will learn a little bit more about exceptions and also we will use this exercise to, to, questions, to question a little bit the status quo of the current uh, exception implementation in all the programming languages. Also we will learn some of the differences between lambdas and closures in Ruby and we will practice TDD and object-oriented design in the meantime. To understand the videos you have to know Ruby if you have some experience using exceptions in Ruby, it's the better. Uh, and also, is if you have exceptions with Lambda and Closure, it's going to be better for you. Uh, you have to know a little bit about TDD to be able to follow the exercise also. I would like to do a disclaimer before starting. Uh, the first one is that there is no intention to replace the current Ruby exception implementation with this exercise. Also, that these videos are not intended to be the starting point for you to learn Ruby, exceptions, TDD, or object-oriented design. Uh, these, are, these videos are kind of advanced, so um, it's not uh, the idea for you to use them as a starting point to learn about these topics. And because these videos are advanced, as I said, I will recommend you not to give up easily, okay? don't don't uh, give up in the first thing or the first moment that you don't understand something just try to see the video again or try to debug the code that is available for you these are the resources where you can download the videos and the code to play with it and okay i think that's all so let's start first of all i would like to review how exceptions are uh, implemented in ruby to use exceptions, you have to you have the begin rescue expression, uh, where you can assign the result of evaluating that expression to a variable. For example, in this case, we are going to assign the result of implementing of evaluating this expression to the variable result. And as you can see, the result is going to be two because the exp the one plus that's the result of one plus one. Remember that uh, the begin rescue and expression have three parts. The first one is the part where you, where you put the code that you want to handle exceptions for. Uh, then you put the exception type that you want to handle. And at the end, you write the code that is called the exception handler per se. If there is no exception, so we get as a result the result of evaluating the code that we wanted to handle exceptions from and if that code generates an exception like for example uh, dividing one by zero we will get as a result the the result of executing the exception handler in this case is the number four because that's the result of summing two plus two so okay, remember that we have three parts. The first part is the code that you want to handle exceptions from, the exception type, and last and, and at the end, the uh, exception handler. So with that in mind, we will go and start writing our first test. Remember that we are doing TDD. So the first thing that we'll have to do is to write a test. So what kind of test we are going to write? Well, we are not sure the type of test that we're going to write yet and we are forced to put a name to this test. So I always recommend when you don't know how to name something not to use a bad name that is a name that comes to your mind on first shot 
but to use a meaningless name. The difference between a bad name and a meaningless name is that a bad names, bad names uh, get uh, with the time. Uh, you get to to think about them as good names. You get used to those bad names, and then you forget to rename them. A meaningless name is a name that is always telling you, "Please rename me," because it is so bad that you cannot get some meaning from it. So in this case, we're gonna name this test with a bad, a meaningless name. For example, test one. The meaning of that is nothing. So, and the idea is that with the time we will get some idea on how to get a better name for this test and when we do it, we will come here and we will rename it. Okay, so uh, before uh, starting to think about the first test, let's think a little bit more about how we're going to implement this new model. Remember that we have three parts, the code that we want to handle the exception from, the exception type, and the exception handler. So we have to represent that with objects. How do we represent code with objects? Well, we have uh, what is called uh, blocks in the object paradigm, or in Ruby, also called lambda or closure. Uh, we're, go uh, we're going to use the, the name blocks because it uh, includes closures and lambda, but then we're going to see later on these videos that there is a difference between lambdas and closures. So we we have to represent the code that we want to uh, ex uh, you know execute and handle exception from using uh, a block. In this case, we're going to use a lambda, and we, let's say we want to handle exception from this code one plus one, and then we have to send some message to this object to tell him, okay, I want to evaluate you, and while you are evaluating, I want to handle the exceptions that you may generate. So we're going to use the message name called call handling, and after that we're going to send as a parameter the exception type that we want to handle, and later the exception handler that we want to execute in case the exception is signal. So this is the type of uh, messages of message sorry that we are going to implement in our new model. First of all, the receiver of the message call handle is going to be a lambda or a closure and the call handling message will send will receive two parameters, the exception type and the exception handler that we want to evaluate in case the exception is wrong. Okay, so now, what's the test that we are going to write? We could write a test that, you know, uh, we have a block where an exception is thrown, and then we have the exception handler that has to be evaluated. But writing that test, it is going to be more difficult than just writing a test for a block that executes without throwing any kind of exception, and therefore the exception handler should not be evaluated. So that's the test that we are going to write. Is It looks easier than the other one. You will see why. And to write that test, to have that test written correctly, we have to change here the exception handler in such a way that if the exception handler is executed, we want an error to be thrown. We, we want an assertion to fail. That in this um, unit test framework that we are going, uh, that we are using, is signal with the message flank. If the message flank is sent, then the test fails. And to have our test written correctly, we have to have some assertion, and we want to assert that the result of evaluating, of sending the message call handling to this block, is going to be two. So that's the assertion for this test. We want to assert that 2 is equal to result. OK, so now the test is written. Let's write it, let's run it and see what happens. OK, we have an error because call handling is not implementing is not implemented in the class proc. The class proc is the class for all blocks 
lambdas or closures. So that's we ha that's what we have to do. We have to implement the method call handling that is going to receive an exception class that is the a type of exception that we want to handle and also a handler. Okay, let's see what happens now. Okay, we don't get an error, we get a failure and that's because we are getting nil as a result of sending the message call handling and that's fine because we haven't provided any kind of implementation for this method. Uh, so what what is the easiest implementations implementation that we can provide to this method for the test to pass? Well, the easiest implementation is just to evaluate the block that got the call handling message that received that message and we can do that just sending the message call to itself if we do this the block is going to be evaluated and therefore we're gonna get two as a result let's see if that's true and yes that's true and we have our first test running so I don't know if you but I'm happy because we got some progress okay so let's review what we have done from the design point of view, remember that it is better to use meaningless names uh, instead of bad names. With the time, the bad names get good names and that's not uh, good from the design point of view. Meaningless names uh, force you to uh, rename them every time you see them. So when you get enough information of what you are doing, you will be able to rename that meaningless name to a good name. Also we saw that lambda enclosures are objects that allow us to represent code. Mm, the idea for those objects are to re easily represent type uh, you know some part of code that we can, that we want to encapsulate in objects. From the TDD point of view remember that we have to start always with the simplest test possible to avoid analysis paralysis we don't want to think too much, you know, like one hour, two hours, running the system in our head, getting tired uh, before getting some feedback from the, th from the code that we're writing. So always start with the simplest test and always implement the simplest solution to make the test pass to get immediate feedback. Uh, a good video about immediate feedback is uh, the video about uh, inventing on a principle of Brett Victor that I recommend you to see. It. It's a really good video that shows the importance the importance to get uh, feedback as soon as possible when you are writing uh, a program. Also, it is very important to implement the uh, easy solution because that will help you to think on the next next test that you have to write. If you implement the complete solution uh, from the beginning, then you you will not know how to follow, how to uh, how, what is going to be the next test that you have to write. So okay, that's all for this first episode. We haven't do too much, but we just started. So I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next one.